Like us, you're probably already at the stage where the house is freezing cold, but the truth is that with gas prices being as high as what they are, you couldn't possibly switch those radiators on, or could you? There's tons of ways to keep those bills down that many of us can in fact use, and there's one very simple trick in particular that could save you hundreds of pounds on your bills by dint of eating away as much as 20% of your heating consumption. I'm Liam from Hot UK Deals, and what we're about is helping you, the consumer, save as much money as possible while getting you the most value for your money. To that end, we're going to show you eight amazing amazing tricks with which to keep those winter heating bills down and to keep the heat at home up. Let's go. Now, I know this first tip here doesn't sound great. In fact, it's pretty darn obvious, but well, it does pay to wear warmer clothes. For one thing, it's easy and it is indeed something that does work. Although we shouldn't be, of course, making ourselves uncomfortable or putting on five layers of clothing just in order to get warm, especially if that means overheating ourselves. This can then cause you to then open up all the windows and lose all of the heat in your home. However, at this point, it's still a really important one and it can really pay to have a dig around and see what clothing that you might have hidden away. Things such as base layers, long johns, woolen jumpers, will needless to say keep you much warmer than thin cotton. It's also the perfect time of year to be living in those thick flannel PJs you love, especially when mixed with warm cozy socks and a hot cup of tea. Our second tip here in an effort to save money, and this is a big one, is to make sure that you have sufficient insulation. Probably the quickest way as well as the easiest insulation job is going to be your loft or attic space. If you're not able to do it yourself, it's of course better to get someone to check it for you from a reputable local business. Currently, the guidelines suggest that you should have between 250 millimeters and 270 millimeters of insulation for it to be enough. There's a series of good how-to guides, including those from B&Q, which we'll include in the video details that can really help you out with installing this. Our third tip here is that it's always a good idea to check your heating settings. Now, I get it. Messing around with timers might seem a little bit daunting, especially if it's your first time doing it, but you can easily find a manual, especially online, with which to make some adjustments. And this might, in fact, help help you get it working more effectively. For example, if you're out for most of the day, obviously you don't have the heating on. If you can't sort the timings, maybe just try lowering the thermostat and finding a nice spot that you're comfortable with. This can really go a long way in saving energy as well as switching radiators off in rooms that you don't use much. It's estimated that with each degree Celsius that you turn the radiator down, you're saving yourself an extra 2-3% to reduction off of your heating bill. If you've got the budget for it, it might also pay to pick up a smart thermostat that you can then program to make the heating changes for you. You can even control many of them from the app. And nowadays, they're not too pricey. There's actually tons of deals on them over on Hot UK Deals. Our fourth tip here is one that actually many of us don't know about, but it's a really, really big one. You should regularly bleed your radiators. This is vital so as to ensure that the warm water is actually circulating properly through your central heating system. It's really, really easy to do, and the only thing you'll need for it is a radiator key, as well as a bucket and a rag for the excess water. Any air pockets in there will be stopping your radiator from heating properly and subsequently heating your room. You'll normally be able to tell if they need bleeding, especially if they're hot at the bottom, but cold at the top. There's some really great guides out there for sorting this very simple process, and we've included a link in the video caption here that can help you. Needless to say, our fifth point here can be fairly obvious, but it's a major point for keeping those bills down. Shut your doors and windows. If you're heating your home and there's rooms not being used, then of course make sure that these doors are shut. For an even better insulation solution in those rooms, it's definitely worth putting in a draft excluder in front of the door. And the same goes for the windows. If they're even slightly open, then you'll be losing massive amounts of heat, so it's definitely worth taking a look around for them when you stick the heating on. The same goes for closing doors immediately when you leave the room. Were you born in a barn? Now, this next tip is a biggie, arguably one of the biggest, in fact, and one that's shown to shore enough hundreds of pounds a year if used properly, especially with gas prices the way that they are. Now, if you've closed your doors and windows, but you're still feeling a little bit of cold air coming through, then you could, in fact, benefit from picking up some adhesive backed draft excluders. These are super good for both doors and windows, assuming that the issues aren't more serious than faulty seals. You can in fact apply these yourself depending on how bad the issue is. Otherwise, of course, it's best to get someone else to do it. You can even get these for external doors too. There's also stick-on double glazing kits that are available for windows that more efficiently keep cold outside and heat inside. Some people have even sworn on sticking bubble wrap to their windows to use a pocket of air to better insulate. All you have to do, obviously, is cut the bubble wrap to the size of the window.
window pane. Maybe just pre-warn the neighbors coming around before you do that. There's also insulating blinds too that can also work if these won't do the trick. Our seventh point here is one that we'll all love, as if you needed another reason to get in the baking and cooking mood when it's chilly out, but here we are. Nothing of course warms up the stomach and the soul like some homemade food, but you can also heat up your house just by using the oven. More so if your house is already warm already. All you have to do of course is prop open the oven door and let out that heat once you're done cooking and make use of it. Same goes for hobs unless they're induction. Lastly, for our eighth point, one way to really pick up some pennies back depending on your situation is to pick up a space heater. For example, if you're using a single room during the day, like in an office, then it could really be worth it. You'll find four different types of heater. Halogen heaters are probably the cheapest option, but they're not always made for heating up a whole room or really anything except keeping a blast of heat in front of them. Convector heaters, meanwhile, are better for small to medium sized rooms. And while they're more expensive to run, they're actually better at heating the whole of the room as well as doing a better job overall, despite taking longer to get warm. Fan heaters, meanwhile, can warm small rooms up quickly as cool air is pulled in and pushed over the heating element. But the downside here is that they're often noisy and they're expensive to run. Lastly, oil-filled radiators are generally more expensive to run than halogen heaters, but they're lower than those of convector heaters. You'll get usually a good heat control from them and they also hold heat for longer, meaning they'll, they'll also give off heat even when you turn them off. But that actually mirrors what most modern oil heaters do in warming to a good temperature and then powering off to save lecky. So there we have it, eight simple yet effective ways with which to keep your home warm and bubbly over a winter that unfortunately for many of us could be really tough, both in terms of the cold but also with the impact of massively rising energy prices for many of us. We have in fact made various other videos on the various ways in which you can get help in keeping those energy bills down and in getting help and paying them off if you're struggling. Those are really, really worth a watch should you find yourself in those situations as indeed many of us actually do. However, on the topic of the many different ways to save on your heating bills, do you know of any perhaps genius ways with which to keep your house warm whilst keeping the bills down? Perhaps any other ways to save money around the home that you'd like to share? Of course, don't forget to let us know in the comments below, as well as to like and subscribe to our channel here so that you never miss out on all of the best ways to save. Thanks for watching from Hot UK Deals.